This is an exciting time of year from the standpoint of cedar apple rust. What a fascinating disease. And I thought we'd spend just a, a minute or two talking about this disease because it is something that is very timely and as you'll see here in a moment, very noticeable. So cedar apple rust is a disease of apples and crab apples, but it's also a disease of eastern red cedar and various types of ornamental junipers. It has a very interesting life cycle. It sort of hops back and forth from one host to the other. And the uh, start of the problem for us on our apples and our crab apples is the overwintering stage on the eastern red cedar. And it's a hard knot, as we see in this picture here, usually found on one of the older branches on the uh, cedar or the juniper. Now, where we begin to notice this is in April after a soaking rain. As I look out the window here and the rain's pouring down, I know really, you know, I know that uh, uh, tomorrow or the next day would be a good time to go out and look for the uh, fruiting bodies of the cedar apple rust on the eastern red cedar. Those hard knots we just saw begin to sprout these orange growths. And these are called telio horns, and they are dispensing spores now that spread on the wind from the eastern red cedar to the next host in line, which is the apple tree or the, uh, or the crab apple. Typically, these are seen in late March and in April. And this is a useful uh, integrated pest management tool because when you see these sorts of, uh, of growths on the cedar tree, this is a good clue that infection periods will soon begin on the apple or the crab apple. Now, what does it look like on the, uh, the apple or the crab apple? Well, probably what we most notice are the lesions on the leaves. And these are orange or yellow in color. And the picture here shows the upper surface of the leaf. And if you were to flip it over, you see a similar color, but you also see raised bumps on the underside of the leaf. And occasionally we see it on the fruit. And that picture on the, uh, the next to the, the leaf picture is a picture of a green apple. And it shows the cedar apple rust uh, lesion or spot on the fruit. And it typically is darker in color than the fruit itself. And if you look closely, you'll see those same raised bumps on the fruit. In a bad cedar apple rust year, you can see entire tree involvement as we see in this picture here. This is a, an abandoned orchard. It didn't receive any care, but it was very noticeable from a long distance away as the trees had an overall bright orange, bright yellowish cast to them. Now, how do we manage cedar apple rust? Well, the, the first line is to look at the apple or crab apple host. And fortunately, we have a number of apple and crab apple cultivars that are resistant to cedar apple rust. And particularly on the apple side of things, it, it's in the interest of, of home orchardists to choose those cultivars that are resistant uh, to, to cedar apple rust. And I'll refer you to a publication, Disease Resistant Apple Cultivars, uh, developed by University of Missouri Extension, has a listing of apple uh, cultivars that are resistant to a range of apple diseases. And using that list as a reference, these are the cultivars that are listed as resistant to cedar apple rust. Now you'll notice the ones with the asterisks. These are cultivars that not only have resistance to cedar apple rust, but also have resistance to other apple diseases, such as apple scab or, or fire blight. So again, good choices for the, the home orchardist uh, from the standpoint of simplifying disease management. And then some other approaches to integrated pest management with cedar apple rust. Uh, it's a good practice to prune your trees, apples and crap apples annually to open up the tree so that they have an open structure. An open structure encourages rapid drying of the foliage and the, uh, the uh, fruit. And it also uh, sets up a situation where if you decide to spray your tree, you get good penetration of spray it to the inner parts of the tree. And the uh, sprays used to manage the cedar apple rust need to be in place before infection periods begin. Uh, these are sprays that are preventative in nature. So having a, a good open structure allows you to get sprays up to and in around all parts of the tree. Another approach to integrated pest management is the removal of adjacent eastern red cedar trees. Now this is not going to completely solve the problem. Those orange telio horns that we saw earlier that are dispensing spores, uh, these spores are light and they're windblown and they can move several miles from the, uh, the eastern red cedar host. So it's generally not practical to remove all of the eastern red cedars within two, two miles of our orchards, but removing those trees that are adjacent to apples or crab apples will be helpful. Keep in mind that a number of ornamental junipers can also be hosts for uh, cedar apple rust. And in this case, uh, a better approach is to remove those overwintering galls that we saw earlier. Uh, going out in, uh, in February, or early March, noticing where those galls are and printing them out can be helpful in uh, 
the severity of cedar apple rust. And then finally, uh, we do have fungicide applications that, that are available. A number of fungicides are registered for control of cedar apple rust. And I'll refer you to the fruit spray schedules for the homeowner. Uh, this is a University of Missouri Extension Guide uh, 6010 that's available. 